The warm amber light of the harvest moon has gently guided late-night visitors to the Bellrose Diner since its inception. She knows the heart of each who dine and the memories that will be invoked whilst there. Now you will learn the poignant stories and view the cards that reflect the owner's sense of self. In their mind's eyes, the years recede. Objects and ambiance can stir recall of younger days, a sweet delight. The music of a remembered jukebox begins. The urge to rise and dance to rockabilly Elvis or remain seated to a quietly elegant victimon. Reality returns with stiffness of muscles, the immobility of obesity, all sharing the graying of hair and memory. Arnie and Carol Solinsky made their debut on Earth in 1950. They dated since freshman year of high school. Arnie was a union laborer. He was balding with unkempt curly white hair. Carol was a stay-at-home mom. Their kids now grown with kids of their own. It's time to rekindle their love, but diabetes makes Carol miss dessert, and Arnie will not tempt her by having his share. They rode in their 1956 Buick Century Nomad. Otto Windelhofer, management says Otto came with this establishment. He dropped out of high school working at this diner as long as anyone can remember. He has a slew of tales to tell if anyone cares to listen. Otto is tall and lean, almost anorexic, but savors the aromas of a smorgasbord menu. He comes early, working long hours in his 1959 Chevrolet Impala. Dr. Myron and Myrtle Leffler were too busy to sire children. Myron was a brain surgeon and Myrtle was a corporate lawyer. Their favorite midnight nosh was a pastrami and Swiss on rye, which the duo would share. Myrtle would always eat the kosher dill half because, as she would say, when one gets into a pickle, you call a good lawyer. They rode in their 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air Coupe. Dario and Diana Donovello are loud, obnoxious Italian-Americans who never grew up. The twosome are stuck in time, yet both meeting their responsibilities. Married no children. Diana is never hungry, so she says, but Dario has yet tasted the shrimp on his scampy order. I'm on a diet, she barks, her mouth showing evidence of his spaghetti and meatballs. They come in their 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air Nomad. Gladys Gilmore is a retired teacher, never married, and set in her ways. Gladys gave up on a husband and children of her own, but never relinquished her sweet tooth. Her midnight snack would always include apple pie a la mode and coffee with cream and lots of sugar. Her only car is a 1951 Hudson Hornet. Howard Herkimer is a widower for three years now, and he makes it his business to eat at the booth adjacent to Miss Gladys Gilmore. She must notice his usual bill of fare, a simple egg salad sandwich on a whole wheat toast and black coffee. He leaves when she leaves, and being a gentleman, he holds the door open for her. His car manages to park next to hers. 
He comes and goes in his 1957 Buick Century Coupe. Mike Callahan sits alone much of the time at the counter talking to himself, hoping somebody would join in on the conversation. Mike is a hard worker, many times pulling 12-hour shifts so he could afford to treat himself to a 12-ounce steak smothered in onions and french fries. He is a lonely middle-aged man but is cool parking his 1960 Chevrolet Corvair. As Ernest Hemingway said, the sun also rises. The sun's daylight realm is to accommodate the bustle of daily life, open conversation and interaction that will form memories yet to be reflected upon.